Hi dear friends and net aspirants welcome back to a brand new video session of high point and this is Liji Maria and today we are going to learn about Northrop Frye so we have already seen some concepts and things related to the literary theory known as archetypal criticism now we are beginning with the major uh, major thinkers and uh, you know major thinkers and theoreticians related to archetypal criticism and Northrop Frye he is one of the major and most eminent uh, thinker of archetypal criticism we have already finished with the Carl Jung and his major concepts and contribution to the theory and now today we are going to learn about Northrop Frye who has done his studies on myths okay uh, he has done archetypal studies on myths let's see some more details related to Northrop Fry and his major contribution to this literary school of study so before that let me say if you are interested in having lot of free materials in the form of study cards small videos reels and uh, you know small video sessions lecture series and uh, quiz and their answers and series of quizzes and all those things if you want to have about ENTA, UGC, NET, JRF, English Language and Literature then you can follow me on my Instagram page. My Instagram ID is right here, LigiMaria90 is my Instagram ID. You can follow me if you are also there on Instagram and also if you want to join a WhatsApp group in which I am sharing news and updates related to ENTA, UGC, NET and some study materials along with the daily quiz question and answer then you can also obviously join the whatsapp group uh, the link is there in the description box and uh, if it is not working you can directly message me in this number i will uh, share the link and you and your friends can easily join and if you are seriously looking for some online courses for your ugc net jrf preparation that are actually suitable to your own schedules and uh, your own life chores then uh, you can visit my website www.highpoint.in where we have provided amazing courses for you along with the 900 plus audio lectures 300 uh, plus downloadable materials pdf materials and 3000 more than 3000 questions in the form of uh, practice and previous questions uh, co pre practice and previous set of question papers which are lively attemptable and you can know your progress instantly after your exam along with all these uh, things uh, study materials we have already provided for now 15 percentage of off in the fee structure for our courses and uh, i don't want you to waste your time on waiting for the next nta ugc net exam schedule notification you can join us as a student now itself today itself and start your learning so have the free trial and see what we have provided there and if you are interested in joining you are welcome to join and after you join for either of the courses you will get two bonuses you will get two bonuses what are they weekly testing every saturdays and personalized study guideline from us which are customized especially for you according to your schedules and your uh, preferences of topics so if you are interested let me know please dm me or message me in the given number on the screen or you can directly come and uh, ask for the details in my instagram instagram page too from the website too you can join us or you can message us okay so make sure that you're using all these facilities that we are providing there so coming back to the topic today's topic is Northrop Frye an eminent thinker of archetypal criticism and he was born in the year 1912 and died in the year 1991 so he lived from 1912 to 1991 Let's have an introduction. This is uh, Northrop Fry. He's a Canadian literary theorist and artist. So his nationality is Canadian. I have seen a question asking about the nationality of Northrop Fry. Okay, Canadian literary theorist and artist. He belongs to the school of archetypal literary criticism, romanticism, and Toronto School of Communication Theory. So he is involved in these uh, school of uh, you know criticism school or movements so he mainly we recognize and love him for being a archetypal literary theoretician and he's also involved in romanticism that movement and also toronto school of communication theory his main interest were imagination archetype myth and bible so he was already and always interested in imagination archetypes myths and bible his notable ideas are archetypes of literature and classical cultures. He influenced Margaret Atwood. He, she is again a Canadian writer. Harold Bloom, Frederick Jameson and W. B. W. Poe. So he influenced these major literary figures such as Margaret Atwood, Har Harold Bloom 
Frederick Jameson and B. W. Poe. Moving on, so these are some of the notable works by Northrop Frye, which are their Fearful Symmetry. Fearful Symmetry, a study of William Blake, came out in 1947. Anatomy of Criticism. See, in this Anatomy of Criticism, he mainly comes up with the archetypes of literature. Okay, Anatomy of Criticism in the year 1957, the well-tempered critic. The next work, notable work by Frey is The Well-Tempered Critic, published in the year 1963. Then The Bush Garden, essay on the Canadian imagination, came out in 1971. And the year 1976 witnessed the publication of Frey's work, The Secular Scripture, a study of the structure of romance and uh, divisions on a ground, essays on Canadian culture, came out in 1982. So if you cannot remember the A year of publication, at least remember the titles and the chronological order, somewhat the chronological order, because that will be helpful in your exam. Uh, when questions are asked you to arrange things in chronological order okay i'll tell it again please read with me while you are seeing this on your screen fearful symmetry a study of william blake anatomy of criticism the well-tempered critic the bush garden essays on the canadian imagination the secular scripture a study of the structure of romance uh, divisions on a ground essays on canadian culture okay next let's see his major concepts okay his major concepts now now we are going to learn his major concepts can be found in his work the archetypes of literature uh, in this particular work we can see his major concepts né, that are relevant in archetypal literature archetypal uh, theory okay and it has three parts see this work the archetypes of literature this essay got th three parts first one uh, discusses about the concept of archetypal criticism so in the first part of this work the archetypes of literature he discusses about the concept of archetypal criticism what does it mean what does the what is the meaning of archetype and how archetypal criticism is relevant so all those things we have seen in the video in which we have studied archetypal criticism if you have missed it you can find it in the i button or you can uh, go to the description box i have given the link there okay part two of this work uh, discusses about the inductive method of analysis so how inductive method of analysis is relevant in archetypal criticism that is the theme of discussion in part second of the work and part three discusses about the deductive method of analysis and how it is relevant how it can be applied in the archetypes of literature or how it can be applied in archetypal criticism okay so part one deals with the concept of archetypal criticism part two inductive method of analysis part three deductive method of analysis the next concept by Frey is uh, his contribution of four mythoi types of plot so four mythoi's were suggested by Frey that he says that uh, four types of plots formed the basis of four major genre associated with the seasons of the year so according to the year there we can see according to the seasons of the year there we can see four major genres that means you may feel that it is somewhat confused so now let's see first of all which are the four mythoi then i'll explain that for you comedy spring romance summer tragedy fall satire winter so these are commonly we know we what we know what is a comedy romance tragedy satire so comedy he says that if you analyze comedy the plot of the comedy it will happen in a spring season okay according to the season of the year you can have four mythoids or four types of plot according to Northrop Fry. So if you see a comedy, it never can happen in a fall. It can never happen in a winter, but only in spring season. So the season that is going on in that particular plot of the genre, it must be, it will be always spring. And same with the romance. Romance will happen in summer. Tragedy will happen in autumn season. Satire will happen in winter season. So, according to the season of the year, you can actually divide the types, the plot of the major genres into four. Comedy, romance, tragedy, satire and comedy in spring season, romance in summer season, tragedy in fall and satire in winter. Now, he comes up with four major phases of myth or mythoi. 
four major phases of mythoi so in each of these plots each of these genres and their plots they'll have phases they uh, you know and what kind of myths that we can find in romance or either of the in any of these genres and what are the subordinate characters along with the major characters that we can find in them so four phases of myth means what there are four mythoi's or plots and these four plots will happen in a particular kind of season a particular season of the year right that that's what he meant by four mythoi's right that we have already seen now he comes up with the four phases of myth that we can find in these four genres let's see what are they okay so four phases of myth in these four mythoi's or four phases of myth that we can see in these four major seasonal uh, genres okay and their plots the first genre is romance and rhapsodic poetry so you know you take down notes note down somewhere just as i have given on the screen okay just as i have given on the screen you have to write down otherwise you will feel conflu confused once you after leaving this lecture when you come back to the note you will feel you know you you will feel perplexed what does all this mean okay okay romance first genre is romance and rhapsodic poetry and the phase that we can find in this genre the dawn spring and birth phase so romance will happen in happen in spring or summer season right romance will happen in spring or summer season season and dawn we can see a dawn a phase of dawn or a birth of a hero we can see in this phase and myths deals with Uh, this genre deals with myths such as myths dealing with the birth of a hero his revival and resurrection so we can say myths related to the birth of a hero uh, hero's revival and resurrection defeat of the powers of darkness or death so such things such uh, de uh, such uh, events um, containing in myths such myths related to hero you know hero's triumph hero's birth hero's revival and resurrection and defeat of uh, dark darkness and death dark powers by hero so all these things all these myths can be visible in the genre romance as it has uh, phases like the dawn spring and birth phase and the subordinate characters we can find in here are father mother so since we can have a we can see a birth phase in here father mother of the hero they are the subordinate characters the second genre is comedy pastoral and idyll comedy pastoral and idyll here the phase is zenith we can see a zenith phase summer and marriage or triumph phase we can see summer the season summer is predominant here and marriage or triumphant phase we can see in here in this particular genre and this uh, genre deals with myths like myth of apotheosis that means apotheosis is what you know it's an act of rising the hero uh, to the into the rank of a god so that kind of a uh, triumph or kind of elevated position was given to uh, the hero such kind of myths we can find in here myths related to sacred marriage myths related to entering into heaven paradise by the hero so all these kinds of myths are available and quite visible and quite uh, easily seen in comedy pastoral and idyll which has uh, a zenith phase and happening in summer and which deals with the phases of marriage and triumph of the hero the subordinate characters that we can find in comedy pastoral and idyll more or less every time that the, the that the companions of the hero and the bride so there will be friends and companions of the hero as well as the bride so these two uh, people are the major subordinate characters of the second genre or the myths deals myths dealing with apotheosis sacred marriage or entering into heaven or paradise the third genre is tragedy and elegy tragedy and elegy here the phase we can see of the sunset or it will happen in autumn season and death phase death phase tragedy is always the death of the hero right the sunset so we can see that sunset sunset phase will be there in tragedy elegy sunset phase will be there autumn death phase are available in this uh, in this genre and here we can see that myths related to fall of the hero the dying god violent death sacrifice and the hero's isolation so 
the myths and uh, mythologies dealing with the fall of the hero a dying god violent death sacrifice and the hero's isolation so these are the major kind of myths that we can see in or mythical patterns that we can see in tragedy and elegy with the phases such as the sunset autumn and death phase the subordinate characters that we can see in tragedy and elegy are the traitor as the siren so the traitor or the siren these are the subordinate characters we can see in this three third mythoi the fourth one is satire satire contains phases of darkness winter and desolation desolation phase the darkness winter and desolation phase is available in satire and we can see myths such as the triumph of dark powers myths of floods the return of chaos the defeat of the hero see the myths the mythologies mythical stories related to the triumph of dark powers myths of floods the return of chaos the defeat of the hero can be visible in uh, the fourth mythoi of satire and the uh, subordinate characters are here we can see the org the presence of an org then the witch so these two are the major subordinate characters of satire i hope that was clear so understand if you are not understanding feel uh, feel free to ask and comment that in the comment section or directly you can ask me in this given number now he after discussing about the four mythoies and the myth that we can see in this four plots and the seasons associated to them we can now see the comic vision and tragic vision of a myth so there will be a comic vision and a tragic vision in a myth that, what does that mean so human world so there are many kind of worlds human world animal world mineral world and we can see uh, further um, you know vegetable world and formed world so these five worlds are there in every other myths so there will be a human world means the human beings are involved how they are presented an animal world and there will be a vegetable world how the nature is depicted and there will be mineral world how this uh, minerals are depicted so according to the comic vision of life there will be a particular set of human world animal world or uh, we can say a mineral world or vegetable world or an unformed world and according to the tragic vision of life there will be differences Uh, that of from comic vision of life uh, for any of these worlds okay uh, when we discuss about it you will be more clear about it so in a particular myth so if that myth is dealing with some comic things then the human world will be depicted in a particular way or if tragic things are discussed in there then again the um, human will, world will be depicted in another way same with animal world same with vegetable world same with mineral world and same with the unformed world now let's see human world in a myth in a particular myth the comic vision of life so if the myth is somewhat revolving around or if it is a comedy uh, so if something comic is happening there then what kind of human world that you can find in there so the human world will be presented as a community where people are living in harmony and hero presented as a, res a representative of the desire of the reader so the hero will be an ideal kind of hero so the hero will be presented in such a way that the how the reader will like that that hero to be seen in that way the hero will be presented the archetypal images that we can find in here are symposium communion order friendship love so in the comic vision of life human world is depicted like this where human beings are living in harmony they have friendship between them they have love between them they are actually uh, engaging in symposiums and they are presented in such a way that in a pleasant way the human world will be presented while in tragic vision of life in a myth if tragedy is going on what will happen to this human world it will it will turn it its nature will turn to some extent so instead of depicting as a community which has order and uh, harmony and peacefulness it will turn into having tyranny and anarchy so anarchy and tyranny will prevail in human world in tragic vision of life of a myth and individual or an isolated man can be visible so the hero will be an individual you cannot see a community 
which is living in a peaceful way harmonious way but you will see individuals isolated man a leader with his back to his followers the leader is not leading the community but a leader who is uh, his back to his followers and uh, a bullying giant of romance so in romantic stories you can find a bullying giant so that is visible in tragic vision of life and a deserted or betrayed hero archetypal images are harlot which is terrible mother so terrible mother uh, if you see uh, rapunzel who has that long hair so in that story you can see this terrible mother right mm? so in that way tragic vision of life is entirely different from comic vision of life as well as as far as human world is con con considered next one is animal world what what kind of animal world we can see in comic vision of love life community of domesticated animals so here we can see community a group of domesticated animals such as flock of sheep lamb or birds so we can see community of domesticated animals like sheep lamb or birds and the archetypal images that we can find here are pastoral images we can find pastoral images see sheep lamb all this be belong to all these are pastoral images only so such archetypal images are quite visible in comic vision of life of a myth where uh, this is how animal world is discussed or animal world is depicted but in a tragic vision of life we can see beasts wild animals birds of prey wolves vultures serpent and dragons so such uh, you know uh, carnivorous animals and beasts and uh, you know beast and wild animals are visible in tragic vision of life and in that tragic vision of life of a myth animal world is uh, discussed and uh, depicted in this way now let's see how vegetable world is depicted in comic vision of life of a myth here we can see garden how nature is depicted depicted or outer world is depicted okay garden we can see a garden a grow a park you know a well nurtured park garden are visible are depicted you know it means that you know when the lovers are meeting they will meet in a garden they will meet in a park and there will be a tree of life a rose a lotus the archetypal images such as marvel's green world shakespearean forest in comedies so you can see shakespearean comedies are happening in uh, com uh, happening in some forest you know they are quite like park they are quite like uh, a garden right see as you like it is happening as you like it this comedy by shakespeare is happening in a forest same goes with the midsummer night's dream it is happening in a forest but still they are kind of uh, amicable kind of forest we can see we cannot see wild animals there so that kind of a vegetable world you can see in the comic vision of uh, a myth so what we can see what kind of a vegetable world we can see in the tragic vision of life sinister forest a heat or uh, wilderness archetypal images such as forest of miltus comus dandes inferno so here in dandes inferno we can see wild animals and filthy animals uh, roaming around and uh, you know it's kind of wild as it is depicted that way so you know in tragic vision of uh, tragic vision of a myth vegetable world is depicted as a sinister forest a heath or wilderness uh, or take the example of macbeth how you can see macbeth for the first time where you can see where this um, where these witches are you know where those witches are meeting macbeth it is in heath only right it is a tragic vision of life so that's why vegetable world is depicted like that uh, now let's see moving to the fourth world mineral world how it is depicted in comic vision of life a city a building a temple is visible mineral world means the buildings and the rocks and the other minerals how they are represented a city a building a temple are there must be there will be there one stone or glowing precious stones presented as luminous or fairy uh, kind of things are available there too then archetypal images of a starlit dome starlit dome where came where you can find the starlit dome in in colridges kubla khan so this kind of uh, pleasant images of uh, mineral world is visible in comic vision of a myth and what about the tragic vision of myth 
here we can see in the mineral world deserts rocks and ruins instead of buildings and pleasant you know a pleasant vision of mineral world we can see ruins debris uh, deserts and uh, rocks archetypal images of geometrical images like crows so these are tragic vision of life and myth in which mineral world is depicted then we have the fifth world which is known as unformed world in unformed world we can find in comic uh, vision of life we can see river traditionally a uh, fourfold kind of river which influenced the renaissance image of the temperate body with its four humors so do you remember four humors you now ben johnson was again uh, ben johnson was writing uh, his uh, comedies based on these four humors so one humor will be predominant in every other person and that will determine the characteristic of that person basically so the river uh, will be there basically this river depict this um, you know or depict the humor of that person this river will be fourfold and this river depicts the uh, four humors of human being so that is visible in comic vision of life as far as unformed world is concerned in the tragic vision of life instead of a river we will see a sea here as a narrative myth of dissolution is so often a flood myth so in a flood myth this sea this tragic vision of life of a myth the sea is visible as as part of the unformed world as depicted as the unformed world and we can see usually in flood myth and all the sea is quite visible the combination of the sea and the beast giver gives leviathan so do you remember leviathan leviathan is a sea monster and leviathan is a uh, famous uh, essay by thomas hobbes and in which he depicts leviathan and leviathan with uh, who actually emerging from the sea and uh, the body of leviathan in formed with a lot of faces of people and he is actually bring about he bring he brought about this image in order to indicate the uh, what the authority the government system and all so a lot of things are there we will discuss uh, it in elaborate while we discuss about leviathan so the combination of the sea and the beast gives leviathan so such an image can be visible in the tragic vision of life uh, which is there uh, in the unformed world of it okay so these are the uh, these are the five worlds and how they are depicted in comic and tragic vision of life in a myth so i hope all the concepts of notre fry that we have discussed in here in this video are clear to you if you have any doubts please don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section or you can directly message me in this given number and don't forget to mention your major takeaways from this video so that i may get a satisfaction that you have benefited out of this video and also inspire the future students to watch this video and understand more and the instagram id is right here don't forget to follow me on instagram as well as in youtube and subscribe to my channel youtube because we are providing lot of free materials in these uh, in these two platforms such as instagram as well as youtube and while you are subscribing in youtube if you have not subscribed press the bell icon too because i don't want you to miss any of the updates that we are making in here so and also visit my website www.highpoint.in everything is pretty much clear in the website if you want to join and if you want to know further you can obviously ask me in this number by message or call you can ask me in this number i'll be glad to share every other details and have the free trial and have the 15 percentage of off if you are interested to join for now as a student and part of a family and you will get two bonuses like weekly test and uh, personalized study guidelines okay so that's all about it meet you in the next video session until then stay tuned to high point and happy learning bye bye